Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today I am doing something that I have been putting off for a little bit only because I wanted to give myself time to listen to the album as much as possible. But today I am giving you all my official top 10 tortured poet department songs. So I know originally I said I was going to rank the entire album, but the entire album is obviously 31 songs and that is a lot of songs to rank. So I figured let's start, I shouldn't even say small because 10 songs is still a lot of songs to rank, but it's more manageable. I'm going to focus on my top 10 favorite songs from this album, at least as of right now, because as we know, when it comes to Taylor Swift, at least for myself, my rankings, my opinions change very, very frequently, especially when it comes to new albums. I feel like there are sometimes songs that pop out initially and they just stick and they're my favorites forevermore. But there are also times where maybe three months, four months, a year after the album comes out, I re-listen to a song and I just hear it in a new way. And all of a sudden, my opinions completely change. So I reserve the right to change my mind in the coming weeks, months, years. This is just my top 10 ranking as of right now. And again, as I say before, all rankings, reminder that this is just my opinion you are probably almost certainly going to have a different opinion than me. That is more than okay. In fact, I want to know what your guys' top 10 songs are. Please share them in the comments because I love seeing what songs people like, what songs people don't like. And again, the beauty of Taylor Swift, the beauty of music is that it is very subjective and a song I might like, you may not like and vice versa. So just keep that in mind when you are judging my ranking because I, I mean, It's okay to judge it, but just don't be, don't be uh, rude in the comments. Okay, let's jump to number 10, my 10th favorite song on this album, which is Thank You, Amy. This is, of course, one of the anthology songs that we got at 2 a.m. We didn't think we were going to get this song. I really, really love this song. It's taken me a little bit of time to actually to fully appreciate it. Obviously the uppercase letters, the story behind the song, I think has been the focus for a lot of people, especially since it's been released. There's been a lot of tabloid reporting on the song, et cetera, et cetera. But why I love the song so much is because I think it is Taylor. I feel like every song that Taylor's written about the whole Kim Kardashian situation up until now has been with just and rightfully so, I want to say she has every right to be upset with her, but it's it's been from an angle of anger, like just pure anger. And I feel like with this song, there's still anger, but there's a lot of reflection. And I really like that about this song, that she is still angry and she's upset, but at the same time, she recognizes that she wouldn't be where she is today if she didn't, if she didn't go through that experience and that the art that she's created, the life that she has now is in large part due to the fact that she had to go through all of that. And I just appreciate that kind of perspective that she's sharing on the song. I think the lyrics are really interesting. I like the kind of analogy of using this high school bully to sort of describe what she was going through. I just, I think overall story-wise, lyrically, and then also just sonically as a song, I think it is really, really strong. So I have it at 10 for right now. Number nine, The Black Dog. I think The Black Dog is one of the more interesting songs on the album sonically. I really love that kind of like hard rock beat that kind of comes in. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you've listened to the song. I think it's different than other songs we've heard on the album. I also love the storytelling of the song about Taylor sort of finding out that this person's at this bar and she's thinking about him and she's wondering kind of where he is in his life at this point. Um, I, I know Taylor using very specific places or very descriptive lyrics isn't always everybody's favorite, but I really love it. Like I, I love that she wrote about a real place that actually exists. Um, Cause I feel like I, 
I can I can visualize the story in my head so much clearer than maybe if she just was more vague with her with her with her storytelling. Um, so I think this again just really great storytelling songwriting. I can I feel like for me the best Taylor Swift songs are the ones where I can really visually see the story that she's painting with her lyrics, and I really can visually see this story with this song. So number nine. Okay. Number eight, who's afraid of little old me? I don't really have much to say other than I just love this song. Like it doesn't really, obviously I think that the storytelling, the writing is great. I love the, well, you should be. I just think that's so like, I just, I think it's so great. I think it's so fun in a weird way. But ultimately, I just think it's a really great song to listen to. It doesn't really get much more deep, at least for me, than that. Sometimes when I listen to Taylor Swift songs, as I said, I'm really focused on the lyrics and I love the storytelling. And then sometimes I'm just like, I just like it. <laughs> I just like it. And I I can't really explain why, but I like it. And that's how I feel about Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. I just, it scratches an itch somewhere in my <laughs> in my brain that just tells me, this is a great song. So who's afraid of little old me? Number eight. Number seven is Guilty Ass Sid. Now this is a song I've had a bit of a journey with. Initially, I liked it. I didn't love it. It was like, oh, it's good. But I have to say within the last handful of days, this song has grown on me so much. In fact, this song has probably grown on me more than any other song in this top 10 list. I think if I would have done this ranking even last week, this song wouldn't have been in my top 10, but I just think it is so great. The chorus is so good. And I probably have to give some credit to TikTok and social media because this song has kind of gone viral and the chorus especially has kind of gone viral on TikTok, at least on my algorithm. And so I've just been hearing it over and over again. And I just, I think it is so good. I think it is so great. Um, and this is just a great example of sometimes you have to let songs breathe or give it some time because, or go back and revisit songs that maybe you initially didn't really think you were going to like as much because you might find out that you actually really do like that song. You just needed to listen to it a few more times. So number seven, guilty as sin. Okay. Number six, my boy only breaks his favorite toys. First of all, Again, storytelling wise, I love it. The, you know, I guess metaphor of you were once this person's favorite toy. You were the thing that they loved most of all, the most, they were dedicated to you. They wanted you around all the time. And then, you know, as time progressed, they put you back on the shelf and they moved on to something different. I think it's like a perfect analogy. Um, but again, going back to the who's afraid of little old me, it just, Sonically, I love it. Like I just can vibe to it. It's great on in a car. I love it. I really love the song. This is one that I feel like initially I really loved. I, I, I and I feel like if I went back to my reaction video, I think if I remember correctly, when this song came on, I was like, okay, like I'm very much into this. So it was a song that I initially really, really, really liked, and I've stayed really liking ever since. Number five, I can do it with a broken heart. Now, this song has definitely gone viral on TikTok. I'm I'm hearing it, seeing it all the time. Again, it's just this song also, I feel like in the full album, it's kind of a breath of fresh air because I feel like a lot of the a lot of the album is very it, it can be very heavy. It can be very emotional. And this kind of is just like, even though it's actually still a very heavy song and it, and it's Taylor working through a lot of emotions and being depressed, but having to pretend like she's not, it's not like a happy song, but the beat and like the vibe of it is more fun. And I think the album really needs this song. I love that we have the like one, two, three, four. We like are hearing kind of what she would hear in her in-ears during the Eras tour. I love that it's kind of an interesting like mashup. It seems the sound of it feels very midnight. And I think that's very intentional because the song is obviously about her going through the Eras tour while dealing with 
a really difficult breakup and having a hard time, but having to put on a show every single night. And so I like that it kind of mixes that in there. The lyrics are so good. They're so cheeky and fun. Like, you know, I'm so depressed. I act like it's my birthday every day is so, is so great. I just, it's just an excellent song. I'm actually kind of surprised I have it at five and I don't have it higher than this because I think it could be higher. So it, I don't know. I, I'm sort of rethinking that. But for right now, I'm going to keep it at five. But 10 out of 10, the song is excellent. Number four, Florida. Obsessed. Obsessed. I said this in my reaction video that I really like that this song feels like a Florence and the Machine song. I love how much Florence is on the song. I love that she has her own verse. I love that she's really just like a major part of the song basically from her verse onward. Um, the chorus is so great. The bridge is so great. I love the dun, 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 dun. I just, I think it is such a great song. I feel like it's different than the other songs on the album, sonically, lyrically, storytelling wise. I just, it's very, it's very unique. And I don't feel like we've had a Taylor Swift song like this before. So I think that's probably why I love it so much. But Florida, Knocked it out of the park. All right, now we've made it to my top three songs. Number three, So Long London. I have been obsessed with this song since the first time I listened to it when it came out. I love the beat, the dun 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 dun. dun. I love that beat. I think it like it propels the, the song forward in a very unique way. I think I was expecting it to be, it, it's obviously a very sad song, but it's not a ballad or at least I don't know that I would describe it as a ballad because it kind of has a bit of tempo to it. I think the lyrics are so great. I I feel like it's Taylor really at, at her best. And we and I feel like, and I certainly do this, I feel like we put her track five songs on a pedestal and we, we expect a lot from a track five song. And I think she delivered with this one. I think she really gave us everything. She gave us the story. She gave us the emotion. She gave us the heartache. Um, I just, this is, and, and for, for me, this is Jack and Taylor kind of at their best. Um, so top three obsessed number two, this should come as no surprise, especially given what I chose to wear today. So high school, the Travis Kelsey song to end all Travis Kelsey songs. I think there's some people who feel like the lyrics of this song are kind of cheesy. The you know how to ball. I know Aristotle, the, you know, um, wh while your boys play Grand Theft Auto, like th those types of lyrics I know aren't for everybody, but I love them. I love that she dropped kind of Easter eggs in the song from like very notable moments between her and Travis, obviously the kiss me or, um, Mary kiss kill viral video of Travis from years back asked, when he was asked if he would, who, who he would marry, kiss or kill between Taylor, Ariana Grande, and I think Katy Perry, um, uh, the, you know, open up the car door, which famously was, you know, Taylor and Travis's kind of first like public outing when he opened up the door for her, just like these little moments where we as fans are like, oh yeah, I remember that. Or, oh yeah, like I know what she's talking about there. Um, and, and much like I Can Do It With A Broken Heart, I feel like this song is like, it kind of breathes life into the album in a lot of ways. It kind of like, it's like a pressure release in some ways because you kind of have, and again, like rightfully so, you have these heavier, more emotional songs and then you get just like this kind of breath of fresh air. It's so sweet. It's so cute. And I feel like this is a great indication of the songs that we will get down the road whenever she wants to give it to us about like when we get the Travis Kelsey album, it's going to be so great. So love this song. I keep coming back to it. And I've been loving the edits on TikTok to this song of Taylor and Travis together. It is chef's kiss. All right. My number one song on the tortured poets department is, but daddy, I love him. This song is just so good. In a lot of ways, I feel like it's a little bit of old Taylor. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but it kind of gives me like Speak Now vibes. It wouldn't, like if you would have told me that this song was on Speak Now, it wouldn't have shocked me. I feel like it has like a little bit of a country influence to it. 
Again, the lyrics are so great. I think in a lot of ways, this song is about Taylor. It's kind of a message to a certain portion of her fan base who has, and I don't even know if you could even call them fans because they were people who had a lot of opinions about her previous relationship. Now you could, I think there are people who feel like this is a song that she wrote, that she wrote in response to people's, certain people's feelings about her dating Maddie Healy. People feeling like you shouldn't date him because he's a bad guy and he's going to ruin your reputation and all this stuff. And it's Taylor basically saying, you don't get to decide what I do with my life. Um, I get to decide what I do with my life and I'm in charge. I, I get to decide if I disgrace my own name, as she says in the song. Um, so like, don't, don't act like you're a fan of me, but then like have this judgment towards me. Um, but she writes it in such a unique way that it doesn't feel like an attack. I think it's also kind of like funny too with the like, I'm having his baby. No, I'm not. I just all in all, this is, this is to me quintessential Taylor Swift. This is her being cheeky and being fun. Also being extremely, I mean, the writing as a whole is so good. Sonically, the music is so good. It is peak Taylor Swift. It's the best song on the album to me. I love it. And I'm going to listen to it over and over and over again. So there you have it. That is my top 10 Torture Poets Department ranking. As I mentioned, let me know in the comments your ranking, your favorite song, um, if you, what, what you think of my <laughs> ranking, I can take it. I can take your constructive feedback. Please share in the comments. Um, as always, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.